Um, this is Tom on board. Uh, you found some hats on your seat. We did. And uh, the guys from the Netherlands already know this game probably. It's called uh, Patch Up, Patch Up in Dutch. It's called Hats On, Hats Off. So what we're trying to do is what we're going to talk about. We won't do it that long, you know, everybody wants beer. So what we're going to do is we're going to do a little quiz. We're going to look for the, the best VDI expert here in the room. Um, you get a live, lifetime respect from Logan VSI as the VDI expert. And you bring home this drum. You, know, you, can, annoy, you can annoy everyone. <laughs> I do it with my CEO who's flying in his office. And, <laughs> Alright, so how does it work? Um, I want you all to stand up, please. So grab a cap. And the idea is, I'm going to ask you a question about VDI. Uh, of course you all know the answer. Um, when the answer is A, for example, you think the answer is A, you'll put your head on. When you think the answer is B, you leave your head up. So that's the whole idea. And the last one standing, go home with that drum. Easy, right? So we're going to start with, uh, with a simple question, just to get the idea, you know? So, what is it? <laughs> Does it depend on where in Amsterdam you're located? <laughs> so let me just take a picture of you. So, is there anyone with his hat off? Everybody has his hat on? Well done, well done, well done. It's this one with the hat off. So right, so everybody's still in the game, let's start. First question, we're gonna start easy and make it a little bit more difficult, okay? So, the poor performance impact of Windows 7, when we migrate from Windows 7 to Windows 10, a virtualized environment, is it, is it getting better or worse? With the new update or without? What? Sorry? With the new build or without the new build? Without the new build. Without the new build. So does it get better or worse? Yeah, show the answer. There we go. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Everybody who saw it was positive because it's not. Because it's not. Microsoft can tell it gets better. It's not getting better. You know? So that was an easy question, you know, for people already sitting down. Let's look at the next question. So if we talk about upgrading from Office 2010 to Office 2013. It will have an impact, negatively. So will it be with less than 20% hats on, or more than 20% hats off? And, it is, and if it is 20%? Yeah, 20% is less. Okay, that means less. less. <laughs> I don't know, we have for 2003 to 2013, that was like not 20%, that was more than 20%. If you think that, you're giving the answer ready to the group. <laughs> no, 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 no. I, I don't need a quadcom. <laughs> All right. So everybody has his head off. All right. You're still in the game. Well done, well done, well done. Next question. I just keep my head on the whole time, by the way. This is ridiculous if you do it with the head on. Um, what's the impact on your VDI capacity when upgrading from Office 2010 to Office 2016? Is it less, less than 30%, or is it more than 30%? So we just saw the other question, the answer was more than 20%, you know? Keep that into account. Okay. It's less than 30%. For Office 2010, remember, Office 2010 to 2013 was more than 20%. <laughs> so, some with their hat on, some with their hat off. Let's look at the answer. Oh! 32% of people, 32% sure, sure. on the number of PMs you can run. 32%. So how many people are left in the game? Oh, there we go, there we go. We're still in the game? Cool. Um, next question. Oh, this is for the smart guys. You know, we had the question yeah. from 2010 to 2013, and we had the question from 2013 <coughs> to 2016. So, what's the impact of upgrading from Office 2013 to Office 2016? Is it more than 5% or less than 5%? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. 
see some hats on, some hats off. I'm not sure, but it's it's like fifty percent. <laughs> Let's see. No. <laughs> so the, the people with the hat on is still in the game. Good. Seven percent actually. What's the difference between the answer? So let's see what else have we left in our quiz. Oh, that's a good one. Oh, yeah. What's the capacity difference between a default and optimized Windows 10? We got hats on here. We got hats off. Of course, you would expect that it will be that one. But it is actually this one. Yeah. 27%. 27%. If you optimize it. So we got one, two, three, four people left in the game. It's going well. It's going well. You're doing good? Get them up front. Yeah, go, come up front. Come up front. You are ready. Take your phone. Take your Right, so what other question do we have? All right, Apex, what's the performance impact of Apex in Windows 10 on the amount of VMs you can run? So one node being? Is it more than 4%? Put it on. Or is it less than 4%? Three hats on, one hat up. Right. The answer is 5% actually, people. 5. Only running Apex background. Alright, this is going well. Three questions left, or three people left. So, what's the difference in IOPS between Windows 7 and Windows 10? Is it 9% or 17%? I think there. Um, well, is there a winner already? Do we have a winner here? I think we have a winner. <laughs> Good luck with it. Now you have to bring it home. <laughs> Put it in your suitcase. All right. <laughs> so we have one question left, actually. Um, if we don't get a winner, we we'll just do a percentage. <laughs> you know? um, so what would you what would you guess in general, like the overall capacity if we migrate from Windows 7 to Windows 10, is it more or less than 10%? Then? More, more than that? More. All right. It's 12 percent. Whenever it's well, it's in our lab, of course. Then the ideal situation to test it, but for you, it's probably a different number because in every environment, of course, it, it differs. So, well, we've talked we've talked a lot about performance and, and performance impact, the changes that we're making. So let's just get back to what what we think performance is. You know, you can have whatever environment, but in our opinion, it's just a great user experience. You know, if the people are, are happy, you're doing a good job. The performance of your environment is good, right? most important thing. So we're talking about end user experience. What do we think is end user experience? Like what is it? Responsiveness. Well in our opinion, end user experience it's, it's personal. You know it's, it has to do with expectations about mood, if the weather is shit, you know, you, you can, you're coming up work and you're like, damn the thing locks on very slow, you know? It has to do with a lot of things. Tolerance, of course, expectations. So, how do we see that from an IT's perspective? So, what kind of, I heard you say response times. I think that's a good one. So, from an IT perspective, what is performance, what, what results in end user experience? I think we have a couple of things there. It's about scalability, <coughs> um, the capacity of your environment, availability, of course, should be there always, and response times. Very good one. Um, so how, how can we manage that? How do we influence that? How do we, we make sure that it always is the, in the best possible way? So performance, as it is on my shirt, it can also defer, you know? Some, so same as women. Some women, you can buy them flowers and do a two-minute job. 
other ones you need to buy them a shitload of presents and we have to like hours and hours. Um, so um, yeah, if we, if we look at the performance in VDI, yeah, this, these are, in our opinion, the things. Is there something missing here that we think that we missed, like in the performance of your VDI? This has to do with performance, right? We go to the next slide. So how we see it, I always compare it with buying a laptop. You know, when you buy a laptop, it's fresh, it's fast, you know, it works, you're happy, and you go home. And it works perfect for one after three years. You know, you're all engineers, you all know how to, to maintain a laptop, I think. But after two or three years, you should have it two or three years. Yeah, that's right. So we build a VDI, a new VDI environment every year. That's what we Just the first Microsoft patch day, and then it's run slowly. It's fine. So, why do we deploy a VDI environment and never do main, well, maintenance, upgrades, changes, you know? But as, as seen in our quiz, most of the changes don't have a positive effect, although Microsoft often say, like, it get, get better and better, you know? It's not, I think, 95% of all changes. Just, and there are a lot of changes, not only Microsoft. The example that we use, you, you also have your storage, firmware upgrades, all the small changes that you do, they all impact on your performance. So, um, let's look at that. So, can you explain something about the change that we make? I think it's version, yeah. All right. um, well, if we look at changes, um, you can, yeah, it, it, it's different for every change you do. So you can think of uh, software updates, I uh, think it's office updates, you can think of um, GPO here, GPO there. Everything, every change you do has a specific impact on your environment. If it's for just one, two user, or even for the, all of your users, everything has an impact. So well, what we think is, okay, how can you manage the changes? Like we can, uh, like we said in the, uh, in the test, so the, um, the questions that we have. There are a lot of things that change or have, uh, are impacted by simple changes or large changes. So what we say is if we want to make sure that we can manage our changes, if we can uh, yeah, control our changes so we know what's going on, and we say, well, you should have scenario testing. Just compare your current environment with the changes you're trying to implement and see what, I'm, what, what the result is. To do that, uh, you need to generate load. You need to make sure that you can get the same type of load that you are or that you want, that are that's uh, comparable to your users, and measure it from the end user perspective. Because measuring with just hard statistics, as in this is my I/O, this is my CPU, that's not enough. Because that's not what the user feels. And in the end, like we said, a good user, a good performance is good end user performance. If they're happy, you're happy. So. From our perspective, our outcome is MV is a max. So that's your point and saying, okay, this is the amount of sessions I can run, the amount of users I can run, without important or least allowed uh, affecting their performance and their experience. So we have a, a small graph to demonstrate. Let's say you have an environment and you run with the next amount of users. And then what we do is we log them all, all one by one, and there we go, and then we start adding a bit more, <coughs> a bit more users to it. And you can see, uh, after a point, the system reaches a turning point. So now all the users are logged on, they can, they can work, they're not really affected by each other, but if you increase more, then everything will start to break. So that's, that's the way that we, that we test with Logan Design. So, as you can see, you want to do on the check phase. That, that's your sweet spot. That you, that's where you want to be. You don't want to overcommit or anything because that, that, that'll end up in calls from your user saying that everything's slow. So, how did we test? So, how did we get the answers that, we, you, that you saw at the beginning of the slideshow? Uh, with VSI, we just have a VSI share that's everything installed upon. Then we have our launchers. That's what we call our th simulated thin clients. So these are just dumb machines that simply just kick off sessions and make sure that the sessions keep all, or stay open and not get disconnected or anything like that. And then we have your test platform, of course. Doesn't really matter from our side, but normally we just use VMReview or Citrix or RDP. And then, of course, your Active Directory, because you would need to have test users. 
you can use real live users, but again, it makes it a bit harder. So whenever you, when you set everything up, you kicked off the test the sessions, then you get the A and B comparison. So in, as an example, we have the Windows 7 version versus Windows 10. So here you can see that uh, on average, that we've seen that upgrading to Windows 10, and this is fully optimized, by the way. Both Windows 7 and Windows 10 are completely optimized. Just a simple two virtual CPU, two gigs of mem, not, nothing exciting. And you see that there's 12% impact. Well, 12% might not seem a lot, but if you extrapolate that to about 10,000 users, then there's 1,200 users not able to work correctly. I don't think your boss will be happy if you do that. So um, what we do is that we measure that with ESI, and next week we can do, um, for example, ESIX top data. And here you can then clearly see that whenever we say ESI max is hit, in this case, you can see it's, it's right before it, there, you can see the difference in the performance impact. So in this case, for a scenario, you can see the IAPSs of uh, Windows 10 being extremely high. So if you already have IO issues, then upgrading will definitely destroy your environment. You just don't like that. <laughs> and of course, your CPU will always upgrade. Yeah. Nice. Ah, see that beer. Well, thanks to Login VSI for this beer. <laughs> As another example, we have August 2010, 13, and 16, just like we had before. And here you can easily see that the biggest impact was 2010 to 2013, and it was 25%, which is outrageous. And the funny thing was that uh, we asked Microsoft to say, yeah, it's about 5% or something like that. Yeah. And yeah, the 5% is more or less the 13 to 16, but not much else. So uh, with this, um, you can see that every change, even how minute uh, it, it looks like, or even how large it is, if you don't test, you don't know. So uh, it's very important that you, in order to keep control of your environment, or in order to supply the performance that your users need, you need to test. So OK, you've tested it. Everything's done, said and done. Uh, there's a question. Just wonder, was this 32-bit uh, Microsoft Yes. Yeah. Do it. Have you tested 64 or is that? Well, as you can see in small words, the results are not, not final yet. We're still working on all the results. But for now, it's just 32 bit. And there will probably be a white paper about it as well with uh, Team VRC. So it's probably something to look at. By the way, the results of, of, uh, of Windows 10 versus Windows 7 is already uh, out there, the white paper. So if you're interested, you can well, find it on teambrz.com or projectvrz.team. Also on our website. So um, you've implemented the change. You, you, let's say you, you've done everything that you could and done everything that you should. You know the impact, you've accepted the impact, you make the changes to your infrastructure to facilitate the impact, and then you deploy it, and, and all right, then what? Well, what we have is something that's called the VDI lifecycle. So what I've explained is, is the right side of this, this screen. So we tested a vanilla scenario, we validated it, we compared it to each other, and then we're now starting the deployment. But after the deployment, the performance doesn't end there. It's not like that, okay, I've uh, done the, the, the deployment, everything's fine now, that, that's a guarantee that everything will be fine if everything is in a month or two months or three months. So what we say is that during, well, uh, during deployment, you should update or at least monitor your environment and measure your end user experience because experience, that's the important thing. So measuring the end user experience doesn't really mean that you should look at the CPU, your RAM usage or your IO usage. We've seen scenarios where the CPU was, uh, was uh, pressing down on 100% but users were just fine. They were like, okay, I, I, don't, I don't know, I don't care, I can work, so why is that an issue? So what we do is we focus on response times because that's something the user actually feels. It feels how long it takes for fail from a word to a start or a show to start or out of the start. And once that takes too long, they'll start calling saying that everything's shit. <laughs> so the, the things that you want to achieve with this is that you can either dis discover trend, trends, so you can see, okay, my my outlook just gets slower and slower over time. <laughs> Those are hidden problems that you don't see 
easily if it's uh, in production. All you have as signal signals are that your users start to complain and then you have to start the research. But that by then you're actually too, too late. In an ideal scenario, you just want to be know in advance how your environment is, is uh, being used and how is it responding overall. So you can then discover trends, um, recognize performance uh, impacts on long terms, and you can notify the utility of your environment. So by doing a, a test going 24-7 and not generating load, but just making sure that everything is okay, you can actually see if for example, uh, your, your, your store phone connection is down, or your view connection server is down. But the VDIs are all working fine, but your connection is down. Those are one of those hidden things that sometimes you find can be very hard to find, especially if it happens only at 11 a.m. or 11 p.m., for that matter. So, how do we do that? By measuring end user experience. And we use our product, of course, Long PI. But, um, this is one of those issues that you can see with Outlook. This is something a customer sent to us saying that, okay, we have to implement it. But at the beginning, my Outlook was fine, but during the deployment, everything started breaking down. Turns out, yeah, it has a wrong uh, setting in this PRF file, which makes, made it larger and larger and larger and larger every, every time. And eventually, yeah, it just takes down the entire performance of Outlook. This is one of those things that you can see from a distance. Also, you can see, like, um, all right, how is the performance every Monday? How is the performance every Wednesday? Um, you can discover the trends. You can even, uh, yeah, you can even adjust your maintenance schedule to those trends because you know how everything is available. Okay, I've got a question. Yes. Yes. With the Windows 10 default mode, uh, yeah. Uh, how are you guys finding the adoption to Windows 10 where you guys are based? I'm sorry, the adoption? Yeah. You know. Migrating from Windows 7 to Windows 10, what percentage of increase are you guys seeing, if any? Oh, we see, we, um, you, did, you see this previous slide? No. All right, but it's a 12% it's a impact, so in the... Uh, I think you're talking about customers. 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 Yes, oh, customers. You, you, know, you mean you the amount of customers that are using, actually, yeah, Windows 10? moving to Windows 10. Oh. That you guys are... We haven't seen that many. Oh. But I just read uh, a couple of days ago that it's now finally when uh, business ready, so it's probably going to change. Don't believe everything you've read. <laughs> <laughs> I said probably. <laughs> the official Microsoft response would be the downloads of Windows 10 uh, eight times higher than the downloads of Windows 8 work at the same time. Or Windows 8. That's why it's eight. All right, well. In this graph, you can see, uh, for example, the downtime, so you can see actual gaps in your graphs. So, to wrap things up, uh, as we discussed in the, in the beginning, we're, there are four criterias, criteria, criteria from the IT perspective, saying, yeah, okay, we have capacity, scalability, availability, and response time, just to keep your user happy. Because if any one of those things fail, you, you have an unhappy user. So, with capacity and scalability, you can do the load testing. So, okay, pressure everything to the max and see where everything breaks, if you have the capacity for what you want, and if you have the scalability to increase your growth over time. Then, of course, the availability, that's your monitoring solution, and the response times can be, is both the monitoring solution and the load testing, because everything, that, all results that you can find in the load testing can be carried away, carried on with the monitoring as your baseline. So that's why we think, well at least we say, that testing is very important to your environment, at least for half the users. And are there any questions? Not many people. It's very good. Alright. So if you uh, if you want to try it, just go to our website and I'm not sure is it working? Yeah, there yeah. it is. Um, yeah, it's okay. Um, of course, we have free trial and uh, hands-on labs, so you can kind of mess around a bit. You don't have that much users to play, but uh, um, when you're very nice, you can ask me for a VIP license, and I might get to give you one, depending on what you're actually doing. You're not. Awesome. Not anymore. Right? <laughs> Maybe you buy me another beer. I'll <laughs> take my beer back. <laughs> That's why you buy me. Yeah, no, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. So just uh, visit our website, and that also want to be a question. Should it take you to set it up 
Tom, what would you say? A couple of days. A couple of days. The brief concert got really good. It yeah. was really, really good, yeah. So who, who worked with Logan Vizai? It only takes 20 minutes to install, though, right? Yeah, the installation it's is stuff, it's, you know, shared yeah, with users for you. Uh, Oh, and then we have great support things. though. You could just call him, give him a call and he will help you out. You're creating the scenarios from you the most time consuming. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The most time consuming is yeah, in uh, creating the exact scenario like your users are doing. But if you, you can use our, our default workloads any day. Where, uh, we've seen enough scenarios where our default workers, at least I would prefer that we uh, deliver, yeah, matches the users that they have in the environment. So, yeah, just create a baseline with that, and you're all set to go. Office worker. Office worker, yeah. Office Task worker, worker yeah. every user. <laughs> so, um, well, thank you very much. If there are no other questions, and uh, remember, every, oh, Andy. I was just going to, as a topic of performance, just wondered uh, like what people have seen in the uh, use density, because obviously there's a nice white paper from the Novo that used Logan BSI. Uh, 250 users on a single post with the latest, uh, uh, you know, V3, Intel CPUs and 12 cores. 250 users, I think. Like, yeah, but what do they do? They use calc and so that's, that was basically. <laughs> no, no, it's, it's thing, it's, you know, I mean, it was fair enough. It's the one CPU kind of office worker. So you know, okay. results vary. But if you said, well, you know, 250 users is an interesting number. I think like only a few years ago. Everyone was doing like 50, 70 users on BBI, and a lot of people didn't do it. So I just, I don't know, I was just curious, has anyone... We've got, one, we've got one customer who is almost at 100 users per box. That's, quite, that's in state, about 13,000 users. Just about 100 Any more than 100? Yeah, there's an RES uh, software... Uh, Intra. Most customers would want more than that density, because of the, 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 the failure. Yeah, impact. and do you so know what failure impact? That, that's that's, what, 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 that's what's going to happen. Post going down? Yeah, yeah, that's yeah, because there's not stuff on the user. Have you had a big idea? Six host blue screen, blue screen recently, or from the server? Yeah, that's not meant, but you know, how many years, Tim? So, it's different reason why server can get broken. That's right, yeah. yeah. So, that's more like a server or network or something that's going to take more than one server out. So, so 100 users per box is physical on that. And we're actually going through projects made to re platform and putting virtualization in there purely because the customer, we, we have three servers blue screen. Uh, literally, the Christmas of the call center home, just it was just such a massive impact for So, less users per box, I still think it's kind of. I think, you know, I think the biggest difference is vendors are now using these guys. Hmm? What, what used to happen is vendors used to not do a realistic workload, get 250 users five, six years ago, tell the customer you could get 250 users, <coughs> the customer gets nowhere near 250 users and thinks you're shit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> users. At least they're actually using the stuff that these guys do, which is commendable for you guys. Yeah, but uh, there's always a lot of um, grey area in the optimizing, so don't keep that. Uh, we, we've managed even to run a test with an optimizer of Windows 7, where even we just kicked off the entire start menu, everything <laughs> going back to the, to the bones of uh, Windows 7. And then we said maybe we've gone too far. <laughs> <laughs> So is 100 the answer? No one's got any more than 100 in. But uh, if you have 100 users on one, on one host, what is the bottleneck? What keeps you from doing increasing? Is it purely CPU or is it memory? <coughs> or is it even I.O.? Because I.O. is pretty scary. CPU start with, I think, and then, then the RAM kind of is <coughs> yeah. an issue. Yeah, well, right. CPU I think RAM is needed previously. Yeah, it all depends on your configuration, of course. But, uh, yeah. well, mostly, most of my CPU is you can be solved by just optimizing. Yes. Finding out which part is actually causing the CPU load, and then trying to remove that, or either, yeah, it might be as simple as as uh, uh, printer redirection. We've seen that just pissing off the entire server just because you're doing a printer redirection. Right, guys, thank you very much. Thank you. Let's drink some beers. Thank you.